Hello and welcome back. I am your host, Lord Infinite. In today's video, I'm going to be building the rest of the top of this desk. I apologize for any misuse of tools. Uh, no one was hurt in the making of this desk. I will probably be reading all your comments on improper use of tools. Probably could have used a better tool for a lot of situations. But all in all, this is how I built it. Take it as you will. If it's helpful for you, if you learn something, or you just get to watch a video on what not to do, you're in the right place. I uh, hope you enjoy. Welcome. This is the first video of making my tabletop. Uh, don't know what to say except for make sure you have a pencil that's sharp as a required tool. Having a butt one is throwing off my measurements so much. It's such a pain in the butt. Make sure you have plenty of coffee. Not sponsored. Good tape measure. And of course, a good piece of wood. Now, my original design for this desk, here's my doodle. I went with a couple different designs, but I decided to make this monstrosity. So far, all I've gotten to is this cut right here. Uh, I randomly just kind of decided, uh, first I was going to make a cut about six inches in, but after careful deliberation, deliberate debating, don't make fun of me. Oh, wait, right, this is YouTube. Well, I'm screwed. I decided six inches was a little bit too aggressive, considering there's the line for it. Uh, I also decided on 45 degree angles, so you can get the rough idea of what it looks like. I did one foot from here to there, 45 degree angle, and this is going to be the cut right there. A really helpful tool that I found laying around is this thing. It already has 45 degree angles on it. So basically all I did was I measured 12 inches from the corner to here. Uh, decided to add more light to this video. There we go. Uh, measured 12 inches. Drew a mark up there. And then just basically uh, use this as a straight edge. I should probably buy a straight edge. A protractor would have been a beautiful thing to have. But, alas, I'm an idiot. Uh, then I drew the line all the way across. That's the 5 inch mark. Did the same process over there. Just taking this tool to get that angle properly. Just flipped it over. One foot in, lined it up, made a mark, take it off, drew the line. That right there was an idea I had for a 60 degree cut, but just just wasn't feeling it. I uh, did not like the uh, aggressiveness of a 60 degree, but whatever. Anyways. After that, I decided uh, to go one inch out because what I'm going to do is this lined area here is going to be cut basically with a uh, 20 degree bevel on it, okay? So it's not going to be flat desk going in cut at that angle. I am going to cut a bevel on it. Not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but I've got some experiments I'm going to try. I will have many videos for everyone to watch. But other than that, oh, yeah, little pro tip. I measured one inch from this mark to here and then drew a line at 45 degrees. And then I realized that one inch here to here is not one inch from here to here so 
took my tape measure, measured out an inch, made some marks, and then drew the line that way. You can see one of the marks right there. But I wanted to make sure that it was kind of uniform, that it had a one inch level uh, or one inch spaced from the very top of the desk to the edge of the desk and that's going to be the 20 degree angle which isn't much but it's not a 45. 45 is just way too aggressive as you can see from here. Think, picture this being the end of the desk. What I want to do is I want to have more of an angle going like that. I randomly picked 20 degrees. Honestly, I wish that you could buy a router tool that would do a 20 degree bevel, but alas, I can't find one. I could probably order one online, but I'm just going to wing it. I've got a saw that can do 20 degree angles, and I've got plenty of scrap wood to do all this. So, Good luck, I guess. Well, let me show you the process of how I basically did it to the other side, but this side is going to be a lot simpler. Basically, when you get to the blueprints, I would like to have a... Uh, why does that look so weird in the camera? Sorry. I would like to have a 2-inch... I haven't yet decided on 2 inches yet. Uh, recess in the back, or I don't know if that's the right word. So that way I can run all my cables down here and stuff. I don't have to do little holes in the desk like my first design here where I put holes in the corner. I don't like that. So I was going to do that so that way I can kind of butt it up to the wall. Do note that this desk is going to be a uh, uppy downy desk, you know, adjustable height. So going uh, directly against the wall is probably not the best idea. Focus. Now, what we're going to do here, because I want to be as accurate as possible, is I'm measuring from a different inch, not the end. Gives you slightly more accuracy. And I'm going to go in two inches. So it doesn't really matter what inches they are, it's just I need a two inch indent. And basically, this mark is one foot from the edge of the table. Ugh. Terrible, terrible shine glare. Well, it's one foot, okay? I basically just put this tool exactly where I want it. Uh, not on the line, a little bit before the line. Make sure it's straight. This is very difficult to do with one hand, and I'm probably making terrible, terrible camera angles. Not on the line. There. There. And then, this is a 45 degree angle. I'm just going to make a mark right there. And from that point... You... I mean, if you're very savvy carpenter or something like that you probably have better methods to do this kind of stuff this is just me figuring it out that's what I do best see I don't like that line because that was right exactly on it I turn off my uh, headlight because that's actually causing more problems I want to be, I just use my fingernail a little bit, I want to come over up a little bit more. Again, a sharp pencil is probably a much better tool. That didn't really change that much. Ah, I'm making all sorts of mistakes now. I don't want that to change. It's, this is just difficult to do one handed. But I'm committed now. Also, the angle you hold your pencil will matter quite a bit. And 
there's my two inch mark so basically it's going to get cut like that I'm gonna make that nice and straight and go across to the other side doing the same thing I won't bore you with that part and that will about do it. Wow. Way too much. Okay. That will about do it. Um, this is a me thing. You don't have to do what I do, but I put little arrows and lines. The true that I put here was so that way, uh, as I'm cutting it, that'll be the width of the blade, but the mark I'm aiming for is going to be on this side of the line, not that side. That's not where I'm aiming. What I'm aiming for is to cut right on that line. Uh, that'll give me a, a basically true... Uh, like, if I'm cutting and the saw is on this side, I'm going to be watching that side of the blade and following it and make sure it's on this side of the line. I did some of that over here also. The true part of this line is on this side, and the true cut on on this line, which is all kinds of buggered up. Yeah, I'm out of a racer. Anyways, it's going to be on this side of the line. So, depending on where the blade is, that's what I'm watching for. Like, when I do this, I'm going to be cutting at approximately, like, this angle. And... How that's going to work is I'm going to make I'm going to be watching the blade on this side of the line, not that side of this line. I don't know if that uh, people understand that correctly or not. This side is not getting an angle. This is just straight chop off. Very easy. I don't have a true line over here. Okay. Time for cutting. Again, don't know how that's going to work out especially trying to record. Hello and welcome to day one of working on the top of my desk. I wish I had a table saw, but you do what you gotta do. This was probably the most unsafe crude setup I've ever made in my life. I had to take the guard off the saw and in order to use it this way. Um, I'm not gonna be taking videos of the entire little process and stuff or me you know cutting my finger off or anything like that i don't have the ability to hold a camera at the same time as i'm working so i will do my best to explain everything i'm using an 18 inch radial arm saw again i had to take the safety guard off of it in order to do this I'm sure I can finagle a way to actually use this with the guard on when I actually get to the real piece of wood I'm going to be cutting. But the safety measures I've gone with is I extended the back plate. Uh, I clamped it very tightly. So that way, um, basically it was just giving me the distance I needed on this wood. And I just kind of push the wood through while using this piece of wood holding it on the outside so that way it's guided like on a track again if I had a table saw so much safer I do not recommend doing this at home like I said with the actual desktop uh, I will be in a lot safer conditions I am wearing earplugs, eye protection, that kind of stuff to minimize stuff, and leather gloves. Anyways, this is a scrap piece of wood. I went ahead and I made the 20 degree angle cut for the wrist. I'm happy with that. The only thing is my drawings had me in about an inch. I gotta take this inside and make sure that's still an inch. Um, the tip of the wood there, uh, I don't want, I don't want a straight tip. So I'm actually gonna be cutting this back a little bit. What I want is basically what the uh, messed up piece looks like, is I want a flat edge with this angle. So I'm probably going to measure this out to about an inch and then cut it straight down. But step one, test and trial. First test actually came out pretty good. Spent about 
two hours thinking about this setup before I even turned it on. But yeah, definitely scary. I don't like this. This is what I'm doing for my second attempt. I went ahead and marked out uh, approximately 45 degree angles. And then this turn here, and I want that ledge on the whole thing. So we're going to see how this works. Don't do this. Bad idea. Need the correct tool. Unfortunately, despite all the practice of me trying to inch closer and closer to make the edge, I finally decided I was confident enough to start with the actual top of the desk. Here's the problem. No matter what I do, the wood itself is too wide. So, I'm going to have to make this cut freehand. Which is what I really didn't want to do. I wasted so much time dealing with this dangerous thing. Uh, maybe it's a sign. Don't do this. Okay, here's the plan. I've done all my test cuts, I got my angle, I gotta figure out the, the height here in a minute. Basically I'm just gonna aim for that straight edge and uh, at some point I'll set this all up to cut those corners. Then I'll clean it up with some like chisels and stuff. Uh, we'll see. But that's the game plan right now. Okay, this is my first pass into wood that I don't need. Now I'm just trying to decide measurements. Because like I said, all this is fluid and experimental. Uh, that's a good inch and a half lip. I kind of like it. Now if you're measuring straight across, then it's more of a... Uh, impossible to tell on the camera, but eh, inch and almost an inch and a half, but the lip here. I'm trying to figure out if that's too thin or too thick, because I want this. I want this lip for structural integrity, and I don't want a sharp edge because you know, I I fall on my own furniture all the time. So, if I make this lip thicker, as in raising the saw's height, this will be shorter. So, still need to play with stuff here. Well, I literally took all day. But I am reasonably happy. All I gotta do is just... Measure this out, <clears throat> cut it, get rid of all this scrap, sand down the corners, that kind of looks pretty, and uh, yeah, that's the gist of it. My apologies again, I'm not very good at uh, recording my setups I just kind of set up and then remember I'm recording go figure anyways it's a new day outside I got my shield back on here so that way this will be a lot safer I'm wearing earplugs so forgive if I'm yelling I just cleaned up the shed with a broom and uh, leaf blower but here's the general idea. Put the table back on so that way I can get a mostly a straight cut here. Uh, set my saw blade, measure the thickness of the saw blade so my cutoff is going to be on this side of the saw blade if you're not familiar with carpentry. Um, I measured from this line because I know this line is straight. This is not straight. It looks pretty good, but it's not straight. 
Uh, this is all going to get sanded. It's going to look beautiful. Uh, maybe. We'll see how it goes. This is all experimental. But, yeah. Uh, I am going to attempt to plunge cut. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn a lever while this is running and I'm going to raise the table until the saw contacts the wood, hopefully not chucking the wood. And then I'm just going to kind of run it back and forth. Not the best way to do something, but hey. Is there anything I'm doing that's right? Alright. Getting a little bit out of experimental and getting into the tedious stuff. First of all, yes, I'm going to sand all this. That's just a mark. Don't worry about it. Got this measurement right. Basically, after all that work and slicing this off on kind of eyeballing on things I like, uh, I'm going to measure from the three. If I can. Holy crap. There we go. That's about one and a half inches. If you look, uh, the camera's having a hard time seeing that, or my eyeballs are crossed, but from the three mark to the one half mark, so one and a half inches total. I don't like using the end here, uh, except for very long measurements, because it's not precise. First of all, this one doesn't have the wiggle end, and if you're a carpenter, the wiggle end is, uh, if you're pushing, you get a true measurement of the actual ruler. If you're pulling, it's compensating for the thickness of this piece of metal. Uh, I think that's how that works. Uh, but basically, it gives you more accurate measurements. One, doesn't work. Two, I can't read these uh, lines here on the bottom. Continuing on. I made some rough cuts here. I probably shouldn't have because whole oh, I cut this a little close, but I managed to get lucky. Again, uh, going from the three mark, you can see that one and a half inches. That's the next cut I'm going to do, and because this is a really big piece of wood, so I can't get the saw adjusted correctly. Uh, again, taking it. From now, I'm not measuring this way. You can do that, but you're gonna have to overcompensate because that, as you can see, is gonna be about two inches. Uh, about, you know, trying to measure things in three dimensional space and drawing a line in a three dimensional space with bumps and stuff, not exactly the easiest thing. But I'm here to teach you. So, as long as you can keep this at the right angle and you don't do this a lot you should be fine uh we're not making an engine here so you can be off on your measurements by a margin all right you don't have to be exact but that's the line i'm aiming for i realize this this line here is not exactly straight but this is what's going to happen is i kind of did an estimate made this line straight and I'm going to sand this to be straight best I can. Once I got my measurements I made a couple dots. Good old trusty straight edge or right angle or I actually have no idea what this tool is called but it worked really well with lining up. I made three separate dots as you can kind of see them now one two and then I made the third one up here I made those three separate dots and drew a line. Go ahead and go back and forth. It's not going to hurt you. I also made this line here. Uh, I wanted to make sure that while I'm running the blade, I don't overrun. Because I'm going to have to file this down to make it absolutely straight and true this way. Because if I use the blade and I cut to that point, the... Since the blade is round, as you can see, the, the bottom of the blade, that's where it's going to cut all the way through the bottom piece of the wood. But you're going to make a mark in your desk all the way up to there. That's a good 
two inches, three inches away. I don't want to do that. Then you got to buy like filler and then fix it all up. Just cut it short, get some files, chisels. Heck, sandpaper will work. But I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. I've already cut this. As you can see, I made it shallow to where the saw stopped the line, not the hole. Okay, I'm going to have to cut that off later. I'm going to do the same thing for the top here. Uh, I'm going to reorient it, my saw so that way I can make that line. This one I screwed up a little bit. It's okay. I can, uh, you know, I can fix that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's my desk. Still currently working on it, but... That's the overall look that I was going for. Nice, comfy hand rest. Gotta clean it up still. And I gotta thin this down a lot. I don't know what happened there. But, you know, things happen. We're not even going to get into the fact that I can't paint. Not very good at it. Never really have been. But I'll show you the secret. You're starting to get the idea now. More to come. This is the bottom. Well, I'm going to keep this clip short. Not much to say. So far I got my first coat of black paint on. I'm on my third coat of green. Uh, eventually here I'm going to be taping off the uh, ledge because basically the idea I'm going for kind of looks like that. Uh, I never said I was good at painting. Yeah, I'm going to tape up all the green once it's dry and Put a couple more coats of black on there. I am not doing anything special. I am just simply using uh, this. I mean, you can pick whatever color you want. I just picked this because that is the blackest black I could find. Surprisingly, finding a flat black is harder than you think. A lot of people want glossy. And I don't want glossy because it's evil to laser mouse or laser mice doesn't register and pick up as much I might still end up installing like a stick on shelf liner or something I'm gonna see how the mouse actually cooperates with this but in the next video I should be almost done painting I did forget to uh, cut a hole in the bottom for my cell phone charger tomatoes tomatoes not that hard of a fix soon my pet soon <laughs> well there we go after I put tape down I painted the rest of this black Now it looks awesome, except for I didn't press the tape down hard enough in one spot, so I got a little run. Kind of upset about the paint I got from Lowe's. Uh, the last can just spit and sputtered everywhere, so this is actually a really heavy coat. And I don't like it. But, hey, we're learning. Finally the mating. All I gotta do now is line everything up. I mean eyeballing. That looks kind of nice. But I want to measure, make sure they're evenly distributed from either side and make sure it's in the center back to front. I can adjust that width. That's why I like these legs. 
and something I forgot my cell phone charger I routered it out after I painted it whoops but I've tested it it works it's temperamental uh, unfortunately I can't show you video of me testing it because duh I'm holding the camera it's the phone camera phone is there thing is there such a thing as a phone anymore all right it is now left to a matter of nailing everything down I put these bars approximately centered uh, focus there we go uh, tighten down these screws now the end screws down here are just going to be there in case you want like a shorter desk you can lock down this bar uh, only thing I wanted to mention was I'm about to put screws in here now this is MDF so MDF doesn't like screw holes so pick a smaller bit than the screw that you're going to use which uh, I'm going to go with this one and basically what I'm going to do, actually, that's probably a little better. I'm going to make pilot holes. So that way this screw, when it goes in, does not tear up the wood and can make a good thread. Doing this little trick I learned in the past, a little tape on your drill bit so that way you don't go too deep because basically I don't want this pilot hole to be deeper than that screw oh look I can even use the shadow ah. so yeah the screw is a little bit longer than the hole I'm making that's what you want you could go deeper if it was a thicker piece of wood but this is not I don't want to go through it and ruin it but pretty easy, pretty simple. I also forgot that I'm also going through a frame. So that tape is really too short. Whatever. Do, do note that you are going to need an extension or a longer screwdriver because this actually wasn't long enough without my drill bit hitting. So i going to make it a little bit longer. Once you've got all that done, Go ahead and take your cables. Oh, see if I can do this one handed. Match them up to the little holes with the connector facing up. Connector facing up. There we go. Take the other end. See, there's a little clip on there. Oops. Yeah, there's a little clip on there. You just take that. Orient the clip the same direction. On both sides. Yeah, this might actually require two hands to put it in. Oh, aha. And there we go. After that, power cord, next motor and cable management using tie downs. Now, when it comes to cable management, I am absolutely bonkers. I haven't even started using the uh, cable ties that they supply you. I also need a pair of dikes that work. There we go. But, since you got a little gap there, I ran a zip tie around there to hold that cable. I oriented this box so that way you could run all the other cables on the side very comfortably. And then I zip tied everything over here, which I got another little thing I gotta take care of here. And then of course I zip tied everything over here. And I went ahead and ran the power cord 
I guess, over the frame to hold it up. I have not completely decided what I'm doing with the power cord, so I'm not going to be tying it down using those nifty little stick-on pads that they gave me. I also might be mounting a power supply or a plug strip to the bottom of this, so unsure what I'm going to do. But now it's time to get a friend. I kind of forgot. I don't have friends. Anywho, get two people if you can. Flip this thing over. It gets a little heavy. Next, installing the computer on it. I know that doesn't make much sense, but you'll see. And one, two, three. I forgot, I can't snap. And there it's done. See, wasn't that easy. final step of my PC desk build that I'm doing today. I just got in more RGB. I'm going to be taking these strips, I'm going to be sticking them in the bottom. Now the reason why I went with computer RGB strips and not one of those kits that you can buy uh, other places, all that good stuff, um, is because I don't want to deal with programming. These things have the correct pins to plug in to my uh, my motherboard. There it is. There's the connector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this uh, to one of these. Maybe, I don't know, I might take it apart and solder it. But I bought, actually, I don't need that. From a company called Huland, I'm butchering that like heck, so whatever. Uh, I got two of these cables. Uh, Hulan Electrical Technologies, blah blah blah. If you want to pause the video and read all this, uh, I am not going to be reading all this, but you're welcome to if you'd like to. Blah blah blah. Anyways, I bought these two cables. They are fairly cheap. Bright pin connectors, and if I need more cable, it comes with these. So that way I can just plug one cable into the other cable with these. There's a little bit of a loose connection, but I'm going to wrap it up with tape so that way these are nice and solid. I, I lied. This connector, which has this little arrow, that goes into the 12 volt power on the, if you look at the motherboard, of which I'll show you, that'll be 12 volts. The other pins are your R, G, and B. Basically your red, green, and blue. The problem is, uh, with this cable I bought, it has two of these connectors. Excellent, that's fine. Unfortunately, the RGB connectors look more like this. So, I can either yank those pins out and solder them together, or I can be lazy. Use the male male connector here, plug it in to this cable from the other cable and this already has the connection on it with the four pins that'll made up with this. Easy. I'll get to that in a minute. 
what I wanted to point it out is down in here. Here is my motherboard and the focus lights. Oh, this is terrible. Ah. Edit. Okay, that, which I have severe oversaturation on light, is the connector I want. Please focus. Come on. Come on, right here, right here, focus. Now, if you look carefully, you see this connector here. There we go. You got 12 volts uh, GRB. I'm sorry, I got that in the wrong order. Comment section is going to roast me. And it even says RGB had to run under it. So I'm going to plug that cable into that. Make sure the computer's off when you do this. Otherwise things go bad and you have no more lights or even worse, no more motherboard. I'm going to be running the cable basically this case I bought comes with water loop doohickeys, so I'm just going to run the cable out there. That's why I bought long cables. I'm going to run down there. Yada, yada, yada. Ooh, filthy. And then wire everything up. Right now, testing, because obviously when you buy things off of Amazon, it's never going to have a problem. Ever. Ever always works 100% of the time, especially when this is a refurbished product. Yee. Pretty simple and straightforward. Shove this connector, the male-male connector there. I put the female in one cable, and I'm going to line it up with this cable. I'm just noting that make sure the orientation of those arrows are going to be on the same pin because if I just uh, you know just I need more hands there we go magic of editing now if I connect it this way you can see the problem I'm swapping the 12 volt pin don't do that you'll break these little buggers you don't want that they're very gentle they need love and attention so Simple fix, flip this over to where you don't have the arrow. Pretty much just stuck them in. Oh, that's so pretty. Got the cable. I taped it together so that way this doesn't come apart because I don't like these connections. Zip ties, cable management, all that good stuff, but here you go. That's what it looks like from there. Oh, that is pretty. And there you have it. Simple. I just wanted to take a moment and point out my extreme OCD-ness here. This cable management was absolutely horrid. I did not like it. I did end up zip-tying everything to the bottom of the desk. I ran wire loom so that way I could hide stuff. And I did get my plug strip mounted to the bottom of the desk, as you can see here. All in all, I'm pretty happy with the build. It took a little while to get it all done. I am extremely happy with this. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I did enjoy building this. Thank you.